What's up, everybody? Timothy McCain here, and thank you for watching another episode of Call to Be an Evangelist. I want to talk to you about a topic that I believe is not talked about enough and actually is one of my favorite things and opportunities about being an evangelist. I believe that our responsibility, you heard once maybe heard this phrase before, I believe it's, it's misdated and wrong. It's, uh, they, people will make fun of evangelists and say they just blow in, blow up, and blow out. That is so far from the truth. That's simply the same thing of me telling a pastor you only preach on Sundays. It's ignorant, it's dumb, and it's stupid, and stop saying that. Right? And cause why? Because it water downs and it and it and it removes all the work that really truly goes on to do what God called you to do. Right? So again, you'll never tell a pastor, again, all you do is preach on Sundays. What do you do for the rest of the week? The same thing as an evangelist who is truly truly on a mission and on a grind on an assignment. So one thing, there's many aspects that I want to talk to you about in this future series. One aspect I want to tell you about is something that is constantly overlooked, but is vitally important. And that is and that is the car ride. Or the, or the car ride from the airport. That is the relationships and the conversations, the time that you get to build with the pastors. That's the time where you're gathering, ca- gathering around a coffee table, uh, talking about life. One of the things that I find to be the most, one of the most important aspects of my week or my time with them, and that transcends after, is the opportunity to be an ear. Listen, you have no idea the weight that is on uh, that host who is bringing you, whether it's a pastor, whether it's a conference, whether it's a convention, whatever it may be, you have an opportunity, family, as an evangelist, to be a safe place. And I hope I got. I need to definitely do a a, 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 um, a series and a, a teaching on confidentiality and things of that nature. Siri, I didn't call you, right? And um, and so, anyways, and so uh, all that do a series on that, a conversation on that. But the great opportunity to be a safe place. The one thing people call my wife and I, uh, they call us Alcatraz uh, because information comes in and doesn't come out. I believe, and I hold that, uh, I hold that uh, to a play uh, uh, to personally to a place of high degree because I want to be a safe place where these pastors can really talk about what is going on, and not only just be an ear to hear and a mouth to speak, but an individual to pray. I keep going back to those moments in scripture where Moses was on a mountain and Aaron and Hur was be- beside him, uh, was ri- in his vicinity and Joshua and the Israelites were fighting in battle and all he had the simple instruction to, roll up, to hold up his arm, but eventually his arms got tired and so because they were aware of his assignment, aware of what he was fighting, they, fighting for, they sat him down and lifted up his arms. As an evangelist family or an attendant ministry, having, having an opportunity to really give an ear is super important. So this video is more than just about you. I'm called to evangelist. It's actually about them. Make sure that you're not so uh, so um, uh, uh, what do you call that? Zero zeroed in on that Sunday morning that you miss all the people you pass by to get there. Those times that those those pastors, those children, those time to get the relationships is super important to talk with them and pray with them and legitimately mean it. Do you know do you know the pastor's names? Do you know their kids' name? Do you know them when the event is over? The great opportunity you have to be in that place at that moment of time is absolutely incredible. And what is incredible is that is that I believe that pastors, when they bring people in, they not only want to have a guest, they want to see a friend. So be a friend. We can't be just blowing up phone calls. Hey, can you bring me in, bring me there, bring me there, and use them. And uh, and then the next thing we know, when we need a date again to call, I hate that stuff. I hate it. I hate it when it's done to me, and I'm sure they hate it when it's done to them. So when you are legitimately seeking out the relationship with them, and while you are there praying for them, like so on my phone, and I, I text pastors all the time, even time they don't even text me back, but whatever, I'm still praying for you. And not just like cliche Christianese talk legitimately call you out by name and I'll wait for the Lord and say, God, speak to me. And I'll text them. Uh, I'll text them what the Lord is saying. And I'm telling you so many times they're like, man, I needed to hear that today. This is going on, blah, blah, blah. And they were just waiting for someone that's not connected to whatever's going that they can trust to be to be a, 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 an ear to listen or sometimes a mouth to speak. You know what I'm saying? And what is incredible is many times there are individuals extremely older than me, but uh, but I'm telling you that when you walk in your purpose, walk your anointing is what God gives you opportunity for is incredible. I'm going to leave. I'm going to give you a verse. The Bible says this. The sovereign Lord has given me an instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. Morning by morning, he wakens me. He wakens my ear to listen as one being taught. 
These, this Bible verse is so powerful, and I believe it should be a mandate that is tattooed in your spirit as you travel wherever you go. Have a word to sustain the weary. Pray for those pastors. Pray for that leader. Pray for that fellow evangelist. Pray whoever is bringing you in. Make sure your assignment is not only their people, your assignment is for them. You know what I'm saying? Build relationships. Sorry, my phone is, phones are blowing up. Build relationships and, um, and love on people. Right. And be intentional in everything you do. Get rid of this mindset, blow in, blow up and blow out. Get rid of this mindset where you are more passionate about the stage and you are about the people. Get rid of this mindset where you are more in love with the lights than you are with the, with with someone's tears uh, during uh, during the, uh, uh, a moment of, of, of vulnerability uh, when when the lights are shut off. You know what I mean? And the crowd has gone and the drums are no longer being hit. The piano is no longer being played or the guitar is no longer being strummed. When there's no crowd and you just you and those individuals, can you minister to that same desire to see your lives change and courage and transform than you are when there's a crowd of people? shouting amen in that sanctuary you know what i'm saying it should be a gut check and i truly believe if this is not your purpose then i and i i dare to I, man you really ask yourself am i using this place or is god using me right am i using am I, is my heart to use this place to get me to my next place or my next booking or my next thing or preach to my in a stadium or all this other thing you may have this checklist of accolades and whatnot and there's nothing wrong with aspirations god gave us aspirations you know what i'm saying but if we're using those individuals as a stepping stone to get there then then they're just rails on the ladder not individuals we love along the way Right. And so I this is this is important to me because this because yesterday a great, great, great friend of mine, Pastor Jay, um, at a Oak Hill, uh, Oak Hill Christian Center in Evansville, Indiana. He died a couple of days ago. And yesterday was his funeral. And he's a great example of a, of a brother that I gained, a brother, a family, his whole all of his children, his family. Man, we are tight, 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 close. And I love them. I'm preaching there in a couple of weeks. But here here this man, like we text a couple of days ago, we chat all the time. Right. And so here he passed away. Right. And so, um, man. And so I, I know man, best believe. And if I step to them, I have to step up even more for the rest of his family and friends and uh, the rest of his friends and things of that nature. And it's and his kids and things. Why? Because I'm called to that family. I'm going to intercede for them. I'm going to walk with them. I'm going to fight for them. Right. And so he was my friend, not just an event. Right. Not just a, a, a pastor in a church, but family, my assignment and my my calling to be a encourager, to be a friend, right? And so it's incredible. So you may meet people once, and, it may, and it may, this relationship may not cultivate in every place that you go, but I believe do believe you should be intentional as you possibly can. And this was one of the incredible rewarding opportunities uh, to know him and to serve his vision and to serve his ministry wherever I got a chance. And it was super cool, the relationship that we got a chance to build. It was humbling. I, I wrote a book called Crowns Greater Than Trophies, and Pastor Jay, his wife, sent this to me. He uh, still had the armband on his hand. Uh, I even that was years ago since I, a year ago or so since I came. So anyway, so it was super encouraging. And I hope that this video, uh, I try to go, I try to go mad practical and, and then some spiritual elements. I hope you get a lot out of this and you need to make sure you are judge, judging your heart, gauging your intentions and having a mission in mind as far beyond and past a, a pulpit opportunity, but you're loving those people who's bringing you in. Listen, they're sacrificing funds. If you're if they if you are blessed for them to 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 pay your traveling expenses, listen, they are they are sacrificing that to bring you in, right? And uh, but again, on the flip side of that, you know, that's another conversation another day. I'm going to talk with you about learning how to love yourself enough uh, to not kill yourself, and that they, anyways, whatever. That's another another conversation another day. So let me not get on that rabbit trail. But anyways, let me stop there. Let me, family. I believe, family, that we need to be people. That's intentional about loving people. I hate when someone asks, how are you, and don't mean it. I hate how wishy-washy uh, uh, affection and intimacy uh, through just relational, normal, everyday connection is in our day and our time. Let's be intentional. And let's love on each other. So uh, God bless you all. Visit our website, openingusministries.com. We got great, we're about to rebrand some things, some awesome, awesome, great things about to happen. My wife and I are about to release some great product that you definitely want to get your, uh, get your hands on very soon. If you haven't got a chance, go to get my latest book. Um, my latest book right here, This Is Your Chance book. Uh, it's perfect for this new year and for you to be uh, who God called you to be. So anyway, so my phone is blowing up. So let me let me get on. Let me uh, answer this thing. So anyways, y'all, God bless you. Holla at y'all later. Peace.